Welcome back, Rankers. Happy New Year. Happy 2011. And if you didn't know it was 2011 and Happy New Year, you've just woken up from an excellent party. Now, what did our staff members get up to over Christmas? Well, a lot of people wonder what the Googlebot actually looks like. So we had a staff member do a rendition of the Googlebot for us after it had been to our site. And, and this is what it looks like. So you can see there quite clearly that it's just been to our site because it's you know covered with our logo. So that's our very creative staff member, Annette. And it's not safe to work without it, as I've said before. Right. A lot of bitching and complaining still from our major re retailers in Australia about uh, retail sales. Well, you know, retail sales are up all around the world, in the Western world anyway. They're up in the US, they're up in Canada, they're up in the UK. You could say, well, that's because, uh, well, why is that? Well, the reason for that is, is that retail sales have not slumped, um, except in Australia, because of the Australian dollar. It's got nothing to do with this nonsense that our major retailers are talking about, which is that people are avoiding the GST. And to prove that, there's an article today in the Sydney Morning Herald, which is a follow-up article from David Jones, Harvey Norman, Meyer, our big retailers complaining that there should be a GST exemption and the Productivity Commission is doing an investigation into that at the moment. And very annoyingly, Fairfax Don't is choosing to play a video even though I've said not to. Thank you, Fairfax. But this story just goes into you know some comparisons of online pricing. And the story is all about how you know the, the, the retailers are saying the GST is the problem. But if you look at these prices, the GST's got nothing to do with it. GST is 10%. You look at this uh, KitchenAid mixer. David Jones, it's 800 bucks online. They've found a price of $453. Now, admittedly, all the ones they've chosen to use here are all overseas sites in this particular article. However, if we take this, this book here, this hardcover book at uh, Borders, it's $33. We go over to Fish Pond. The exact same book, hardcover, is uh, $28, and certainly, so, you know, you, you can certainly still get um, big price discounts by even buying locally. Let's go across to David Jones. Now, their particular online sales system uh, is one where they, we used to talk about brochureware uh, in the olden days of web design, saying, well, your site's really nothing more than a brochure. Well... Uh, David Jones have literally done this. They've actually turned their brochures into their website. So if we have a look at their brochure of that's currently up there for, say, an Apple Mac. Uh, Apple Mac, iMac 21 inch, uh, $1,449, right? We go do a quick search in Google, iMac 21.5 inch, $1,100. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's more than a 10% saving. It's not the GST. And if we have a look at this one, which is nearly the same price, we see here it's got a one terabyte hard drive. That one in the catalog only had a 500 gig hard drive. So it's not just the GST. It's the strength of the dollar and the fact that our offline retailers don't seem to be doing as much price matching as uh, all the websites around. And this is what the... I don't know whether I don't believe that they're failing to grasp this our, our, our major retailers, and that is is that when you're when you're researching a product or service that you're going to purchase, which 95% of us do through Google, uh, you're going to look for the best price usually and the best deal, right? That's that's why you're at Google. Now, if your store doesn't stack up for whatever reason in price, in service, and availability. I'm going to go somewhere else because it's easy as just hitting the back button, uh, which, you know, seriously, I'm not going to wade through a catalog like this online. It's counterintuitive. I, I can't search the text. Uh, well, I can search the text, but I can't click on anything to buy it. I want to click on that. And I want to buy it. Can't do it. I'm hitting the back button. And so it's more than just the GST. If you have a look at all these other prices here too, you know, you can quite easily see that, it ain't just the GST, it's the price of the product. So this exemption that our offline retailers want for um, uh, GST for $1,000, uh, for, for purchase up to $1,000, uh, I think is just a little bit disingenuous. Um, don't get me wrong, I don't mind paying less tax, but uh, the reasons they're stating that online is somehow 
um, scamming the system is really a nonsense and the data shows that. Our two, uh, two of our SEO developers, Supergin on Twitter, and of course, Krigty, have uh, pointed out to me that 302s seem to be getting treated slightly differently at the moment in Google. Now this could be a test, this could be one of Google's live tests that we're seeing, because we're not getting consistency in this, but what Jen uh, discovered with one of the sites that she was working on, that uh, when she clicked on a, a result in the SERP, that was a, uh, a 302 redirect, meaning that the Google had indexed the page, but that page was now getting temporarily redirected to another page. She got this result. And it was, and we've tried it, I've spied it this morning, uh, sent it to Stephen Conroy's website, and it's full of 302s. Like, you know, I've lost count of how many 302s. I've got a, a bot running here, a spider running here on his site uh, on the old trusty Dell machine. And it's, it's been going for about three hours, and it's in a bit of a loop, and it's finding a lot of 302s. But a 302 is a temporary redirect. And what the guys have discovered here this morning is that Google, in some instances, is saying, hey, this page is getting 302 redirected to a different page than the one you actually clicked on. Are you sure you want to go to that page? And, you know, Matt Cutts, Google's uh, senior anti-spam engineer, has, uh, you know, said towards the end of last year on Twitter and a few other places that they're going to be working harder on eliminating cloaking and spam from the index. And, and certainly cloaking is, is the, uh, the idea that you will send the bot to a particular keyword rich page, but you might send the user to a totally different page. That's, that's cloaking and it's most simple. But what we're seeing here is any URLs that are 302 redirected and actually have um, ampersand in the URL itself, like we can see it right here, and it's 302 redirected, you're going to get this redirect page. And then when you turn to return to the visit, return to previous page, what has been happening, it's been breaking, and it may not break today. Yeah, it's, been, it's crashing the tab, basically. So Google is doing some sort of test. We can only get this to work sometimes. So if we do that search again, so I'm saying in URL, so I look for ampersand, and, uh, and the search should include pages with DB, CDE. So presumably, we get this one. We click on that, and it takes us to this page. And if we say return to the previous page, it will actually crash the tab. And if we hit the back button, it does something completely different again. No, it didn't crash the tab, but, oh, it did crash the tab, I beg your pardon. So I'll just do that again in URL. Amp um, with a semicolon. Take me to the page. And I don't even think I can hit the back button. We'll see if we can. Um, no, it's broken. So Google is running some sort of test. And it looks like it's got something to do with, um, like most things that Google runs tests with, um, the, uh, sorry, I'm just watching the spider here on Senator Conroy's site. It's just gone, it's gone crazy. I won't uh, put the camera on it. But a lot of 302s. Basically, if you've got a lot of 302s, uh, temporarily redirected pages on your website, I would strongly suggest that you change that now. Uh, get a spider, go into a uh, spider your own site. There's plenty of spiders out there. Um, free downloadable ones as well as web services that you can do this with. But over the years, I've seen a lot of web developers use a 302 as a lazy way um, of generating pages on a site. Not a good idea, because what it's, tells, what it's telling the, the search engines is that you've got, it's like the whole thing's under construction the whole time, because you're temporarily redirecting. You're not permanently redirecting. You're not saying, this page has changed forever. You're saying, you know, just for the moment, this page has moved over here. Now, if you've got hundreds of those, that 
becomes a confusing site to Google. And what Google's doing now is it's saying it's warning people before it sends, to, sends them to those temporarily redirected pages, because quite often it's a technique that spammers use as well. So spider your site, if you've got 302s and lots of them, get rid of them. If, if, if the page has actually moved, make it a 301, make it a permanent redirect. But this is signaling that uh, Google is really starting to take 302s um, or is looking at them as something that could be a bit dodgy. And that's it for today's show. See you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.